Hi, I'm Bruce Berry, Northwest rep for Montana Fly Company, Beulah Hatch Outdoors. I'm down at the Caddis Fly Shop in Oregon Fly Fishing Blog, and today we're gonna to talk Trout's Bay. All right, this fly is really kind of based on uh, swinging flies for trout, but it nymphs as well. And uh, I've seen this catch and take a lot of steelhead. So um, it's a buddy from mine uh, from New York. His name's Patrick Ross. He calls this thing a flimp. It's hard to look at, but man, it catches fish. So I'm, I'm just not sure for you guys swinging trout flies. I mean, like Skagit style down and across. I'm not sure that miniaturized intruders are the thing that trout like to eat the best because this fly is awesome. Here we go. So what you're going to need is a 3x long, 60 degree jig hook. Uh, this is a 4.6 speed. You could go 4.3. You could even go 3.8, just depending on water depth and what sink tip you're using. And then uh, the materials that we're going to need are, let's see, we'll go kind of back to front. You need some peacock, brown pine squirrel. These are awesome. Uh, the hackle is a two-stage hackle, a little bit of American uh, hen saddle, and. We're gonna put some dubbing underneath the peacock just to bulk up the body slightly. The peacock will lay so thin. And then the very last thing we're gonna put on there is, this is pintail. You can just use mallard, whatever, anything that's got a white and black salt and pepper. And it's a pretty easy fly to tie, so here we go. Bead and hook are ready to rip. And we're gonna start that with some six aught thread in black and coat the shank with some thread so everything stays where we want it. This will be probably the only fly I've ever tied for Caddis Fly and Oregon Fly Fishing blog without Zappagap. Okay, there we go. And then, um, wire to hold it down, I didn't mention that. I'm going with Brassy. You could go e even as much as medium if you want. Um, this is a size 8, 3X long. You can make it smaller or bigger as needed. Okay, there we go. And then we'll go do some dubbing. This is a fish dope. It used to be a product at MFC. This is a, a dubbing that I made for years, tying cut flies commercially. And it's, I mean, any wet fly dubbing will work. All is good because it's really close to the peacock color. And this is like 50% uh, Angora, 50% Rabbit. It's got a little bit of UV flash in it. And I'll show you the key if you want to whip this dubbing up yourself. You can even put, there's some orange angora, just like pinches of orange, pinches of blue, uh, pinches of red in, in with the olive. But when you're mixing it, as you get done mixing it up, and just as it feels like it's not, that's perfect. If it comes apart too easily, there's too much rabbit. And if it's really hard to pull apart, there's too much angora. But once you get the mix right, it plays well in a dubbing loop, and it plays well just straight noodled. And dubbings are kind of fun if you have a, coffee grinder, or hand mix or whatever, but you can get really creative on colors and proportions. So there you go with some dubbing. All right, noodled up and we're just building a little bit of bulk to the peacock body, not a ton. Okay, leave some room for all my hackling. Almost had the right amount, here we go. That's so funny too in this fly. My buddy from New York used to come out and fish with me, you know, once in the summertime, once in the winter at least. And I was begging him to take this fly off. And he's just like, you know, I know you don't like my fly, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, buddy, we're fishing for steelhead. It's not that I don't like the fly. It's at every third cast you're pulling in monster red sides and you're fishing with a seven weight. And um, I mean, I saw this thing catch quite a bit of steelhead, but you also got to find a fly that when trout really likes something, you got to find something that they won't eat so you can catch steelhead. And um, yeah, this one, yeah, I mean, even like during the heat of, like say, a Deschutes River steelhead season, when the trout have seen a lot of flies and they kind of quit eating swung flies, they would still eat this thing. That's how good a fly this is. It's definitely worth checking out and tying a few up. All right, so five pieces of peacock. That should cover the body. I don't want to waste the length. Let's just go back. And. Okay, there we go. 
Now at this point, you can make a hurl brush if you want to, uh, but I've got the copper wire, which is going to give this some durability. So we'll just start bringing that peacock forward. If you get good quality peacock, you get this body done in one go on a fairly long, you know, 3X hook. Um, the scrappier peacock is, you might only get halfway and have to do two goes. So try to find good peacock. Okay, put a couple wraps on that, get rid of those butts. All right. Another thing you like about this fly is it's pretty easy to tie and goes pretty quick, so you can get a bunch of them done fast. Uh, pine scroll strip. We're going to stab the leather onto the hook, and if it's a little long, you can always trim it. If it's a little short, boy, it's hard to make long. Okay. Sneak that up there. There we go. Okay, so now I'm going to put just a little bit of tension on that strip. Part the hair for your tie-in. There we go. One, two, three. Snip out that excess. This is the part that may surprise you. Okay, so we're sweeping back all that hair over the back. And I wouldn't call it Matuka style because you're literally tying that down with nice firm copper rib wiring. this point if you really wanted a shoulder in it you could put a little bit of that pine squirrel if you left yourself a little more room you could put your pine squirrel in a dubbing loop but I think you'll find that this fly plays just as tied all right so now for the hen saddle I'm tying that in tip first I've always liked to kind of get my two two and a half turns and I like cutting my tie-in point like so under the bead. All right, there we go. One. This feather didn't have a lot of fluff. Uh, if you have a feather that's got fluff, use it. I like even more than this, but this works fine. All right, hackle one done. And then for your mallard or pintail or whatever you're using, I stripped the left side. I'm going to tie it in tip first. It really allows these fibers to kind of sweep back and stay uniform. If you wrap both sides of mallard or pintail or anything, it, it just goes crazy. So I'm going to tie that in tip first so we'll get that tie-in point cut as well, just like so. All right. Two turns is all you need. If this has two and a half, I'll take it. There's one. There's two and it ran out, so that's fine. Hmm. I always mess something up on video. All right. One turn. Two turn. I haven't tried this yet, but if I was to manipulate or mess with this pattern in any way, I would probably use some hot orange thread and give it a hot spot in the front. Probably would not hurt this fly a bit. Okay, whip finish one, one two, three, and whip finish two. There we go, play with sizes. But that works really well nymphed. It works really well swung under tension. 
It works great for most species of trout and it works for steelhead. Thanks for stopping by and looking.